Why do you disagree with people who say that Donald Trump is not a racist? I just don't believe that the man is a racist. This is just my personal belief because I have a personal relationship with Donald J. Trump, okay? If any of us do our research, you know, we know that Donald Trump wasn't accused of, of being a racist prior to his run for office. Donald Trump was at the Michael Jackson trial with him every single day. I mean, Donald Trump ran with some of everybody, Diddy, 50 Cent. He's on the Wu-Tang Clan album. You know, this is the same Donald Trump that when Jennifer Hudson's family was murdered, he put her up for six months, you know, in Trump Tower. This is the same Trump that sent his private jet, you know, all the way over to get Nelson Mandela when he was released from prison. This is the same Trump that gave me a full and unconditional pardon, you know, pardon Kwame Kilpatrick, released 3,100 people from prison, you know, in one day, July 19th, 2019. I mean, if that's the type of racism we have to deal with, I'll take it, you know? And you know what? The fact that Trump never brings any of this stuff up, which is true, it speaks volumes, period. Dude, ain't no racist, man. Y'all, I'm finna say this with my chest. If you don't vote in this election or you vote the wrong way and you're black, you deserve everything that you don't get. So let me get this right, sister. If we don't vote the way you think we should vote, then we vote in the wrong way, huh? And we're black. Is that what you're saying? Okay, I get it. Continue. You deserve being overlooked for that job opportunity. Let me enlighten you, sister. Before the pandemic hit, the Trump administration had the lowest black unemployment rate in 30 years, 30 years. So not getting that job opportunity doesn't hold water. Those are facts, those are facts. And everybody else is gonna say, oh, he inherited a good economy. No, 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 no. But continue. You deserve racial inequality. As to racial inequality, I don't know. But I do know this, that many of the major corporations, such as United Airlines, Google, and Apple, all have preferential hiring practices for blacks and other minorities. Continue. You deserve having to have a job with a non-livable wage. During the Trump administration, real wages increased for black Americans by 15.4% while they increase for white Americans by 11.5%. And these are statistical facts. You can go look these things up yourself. About that, sister. But continue. You deserve the fact that you're going to have student loan debt for the next 25 years. How about you, sister? But my parents taught me don't take out a loan that you don't plan on repaying back. If you can't afford it, don't take it out. But continue. You deserve not being able to buy a house and build generational wealth. The Trump administration home mortgage rates averaged about 3.7%. And under the Biden administration, they've been about 5.7%. And since Biden took office, home prices have increased by 38%. But continue. Some of y'all are just embarrassing. And I'm not talking about embarrassing to yourselves. You're embarrassing to your ancestors. Well, based on the rebuttals that I've given to your claim, sister, you seem to be the embarrassing one, not Trump supporters. Have a good night. Well, he killed that, but I'm going to say this one last thing. She is right where she needs to be, right over there with Obama and them, because she thinks just like them, he could have addressed it way better than the way he did, but he didn't. I haven't been so sure about a vote ever in my life, especially now. I'm ashamed of the people who call themselves Americans who drive around with a damn silly ass flag on their car and not even realize that's not an American flag. Thing I do is do your homework. You find out that is a United States flag. And it's not even an original United States flag because an original United States flag has these stripes going vertical, not horizontal. Who the hell knows that? Who cares? I mean, we just put a put a flag on your car and drive around like a fool. It is a disgrace. We hear that God's name is you know, Yahweh. Let me tell you something about Yahweh. I mean, I've spent 42 years looking at this stuff. As far as I'm concerned, I'm amazed at how many people don't even begin to know what these words mean. Yahweh is not the name of God. Yahweh in Hebrew is an expressive term. It's expressing something. It's uh, describing something. It's not a. It's not a formal name. You know, it's odd when you think about it. Hmm. Something to think about. Donald Trump just said that he's going to be interviewed by Joe Rogan. 
And that, my friends, is how he's going to win the president of the United States. Now, a lot of people are going to see this and, and they'll say, you know, Joe said that he would never interview Trump. And that is true. Seven years ago, eight years ago, however long it was, Joe was like, I'm not going to interview Donald Trump. Well, a year ago when Patrick Bet David was interviewing Joe Rogan, uh, Pat uh, brought it back up. And now Joe Rogan went from, I'll never interview him, I'll never help him to, I'm open to it. Fast forward to today, 30 days before the election. Joe Rogan is apparently going to interview Donald Trump. The Nuke boys were talking to Trump about it. Trump kind of spilled the beans and says, I'm going on Joe Rogan. And this is my prediction. A whole bunch of independent voters are going to get excited and a lot of momentum is going to go to Donald Trump. And then guess what? This will be the nail on the head to help Donald Trump win the president of the United States. Just watch. Yeah, I believe that too. And he's going to break Club Shay Shay's record with the Cat William thing. Don't break it. Watch. Did you guys see the roads in Iceland? So this is after the newest eruption in Grindavik. And the roads are covered by all this, I guess, magma that turned to rock now. And this is just what's happening around the world. And this is in Iceland and Grindavik. Here's something you never knew about styrofoam cup. Well, let me guess. They're toxic? Yes, but listen to this. Styrofoam is not just a material. It is a brand made by DuPont. It's polystyrene. It's an extremely toxic plastic. Do you remember styrofoam cups? Chewing them off, biting them, spitting them out, flicking them around. It only takes 550 years for this to degrade, and it's still toxic after that. But listen to this. DuPont, man. DuPont, I don't know what demonic entity controls this organization, but they have made the most toxic things that pollute the entire world. I can't even believe it. They made styrofoam. They made chemical weapons during World War II. Most styrofoam around the world doesn't get recycled because countries don't even know how or don't have the infrastructure to do so. And this thing could be made out of the cellulose from hemp plants. But DuPont had a lot to do with banning hemp. And you ban hemp because it absorbs carbon. And if all this carbon's being absorbed, then you can't say Agenda 21, get into a smart city because we got to save the climate from emission. This conspiracy goes much deeper than most realize. Okay, look what we have here. Oregon Secretary of State website for voting. Look over here to the left. Partisan candidates for president. Who do they have for president? Robert F. Kennedy Jr., Chase Oliver, Jill Stein, and Kamala Harris. Someone's missing. Hmm, strange. Someone is missing from that list. Vice President Tim Walz. Someone's missing from that too. Kind of strange. Then again, maybe not. All the district U.S. representatives listed there for the most part but for some strange for some strange reason when it gets to president and vice president two glaring omissions one for president and one for vice president what do you all think oh we know what it is come on now we strongly support and support I'm telling y'all. Now, y'all know I said this a couple months ago. I said, he's got it. I stayed optimistic, and that's just what it is, man. But there is no historical data whatsoever for this next big part of the equation that we have to figure out. Right now, the Atlantic Ocean is hotter than it's ever been before. And not only will that have implications on this hurricane season, but these warm waters have the ability to feed all storms, even snowstorms, especially east of the Mississippi River. Most of our bigger storms rely on warm, moist air from either the Gulf of Mexico or the Atlantic to survive. And the warmer and more moist they are, the bigger the storms can potentially be. If we get into a situation this winter where we have abundant cold air, and and the sea surface temperatures are still this high, we're going to have a very active stretch of big time snowstorms. But once again, we haven't really ever seen an El Nino winter where the Atlantic was so warm, so we have nothing to compare this against. Now, we're still quite a ways away from winter, and there's only so much you can predict at this point. But 
I do have a preliminary and very early winter outlook for you. First of all, in general, I think temperatures are going to follow a pattern consistent with the strong El Ninos of the past. It's going to be much warmer than usual in western Canada, and a lot of that warmth will dip down into the central U.S. as well. In the south, due to the amplified storm track, things are more than likely going to be quite a bit colder than usual. And despite the record warm sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic, I think a lot of those southern storms are going to travel parallel to the east coast, and that's going to bring down much colder air on a more regular basis to the eastern states. And everyone else in between can pretty much expect mostly average or typical seasonal temperature changes and swings this winter. Now that's a pretty useful forecast for sure, but I have an even more bold prediction for you right now. Based on everything we've learned today, I think I have an idea as to where our next Big Daddy snowstorm is going to be. What in the world is a Big Daddy snowstorm, you ask? Well, just about every year, somewhere in the U.S., there's a snowstorm that's quite memorable for the people it impacts. You've probably heard people talk about the blizzard of this year or that year. Or you've heard somebody say, I remember back in the old days during the great snowstorm of 1980-whatever. It's those kinds of storms that I refer to as Big Daddy snowstorms. I think there's a good chance we're going to get one this year, and I've got a map showing you where it's most likely to happen. First off, here's the general 2% likelihood area. It's big because the probability is small. Now, here's the fun stuff. The dark blue represents where I think we have a 5% chance of seeing a big daddy snowstorm this winter. The pink is going to represent a 10 Is he saying we going back into the ice age? But with all this stuff happening, with all this hurricanes and stuff like that, it ain't too far-fetched. And so there are about 110 million Americans who have not chosen to do the real ID and all 110 of them and everybody else should choose never to do the real ID. If you already have one, if you've got a gold star on, go and get a standardized driver's license. Uh, if you're afraid of flying, go get your passport. Uh, but do not take the real ID because the whole idea here and the state of uh, Pennsylvania asked Trump to shut down this program. Yep. They called it a usurpation of states rights. Yep. The federal government has taken over driving and identification over the entire country. And they're gonna take all of your primary identification documents and keep them for themselves. You're gonna to have to Why? give them your social security number, your birth certificate and your marriage certificate and they will hold them. They've never had them what? before. You are essentially recertifying yourself as an American, and then they want to put this and digitize it, put it on your phone, and be able to shut down your access anytime you do something they don't like. This is this is not a simple uh, this is not a simple ID card, and this is probably going to move into the global UN identification system that the UN wants to create for the entire world. Uh, this is your opportunity to shut this down. Uh, there's a there is a um, public comment period shut it for the next. Uh... Uh, yeah, I ain't never liked the the whole idea of the real ID thing, man. I I, um, I don't want nobody to know every single thing and every single step I make, as if they don't already know most of that stuff now. Breaking news, it's time we talk about the crash that took place in D.C. last night. And did SpaceX capture something floating by before they cut to another feed? As well as this gentleman who captured a lot of police presence at the Capitol late last night. And then this person, Sarah with a K, posted about how a helicopter was out searching around last night. And then you had this gentleman in Riley, North Carolina, who claims he saw something. So let's start with this gentleman who claims he saw something that sounded like a meteor breaking up in the sky and he went live within minutes and said that there was a giant plane, the biggest plane he's ever seen. If you listened all the way through his video, you hear at the end that he is staying near Riley, so maybe it's he was staying near the airport and he did not know that. Also, I don't know why a big plane would be following something suspicious. That sounds like something a fighter jet would do. He then ends up becoming spooked, saying that there was four unmarked vehicles near him. However, again, I will remind you this took place within minutes, so I have questions on why did Men in Black show up so fast. Now let's go to this guy's video where he said there was a lot of police sirens, and I'm going to ask the question, shouldn't there be police sirens in D.C.? I would be shocked when I don't hear police sirens in that area. Also, this looks like a contrail. And another thing is, if there was something that crashed, shouldn't you have heard it? Or either you would have windows that would have shattered out from a sonic boom. 
By the way, this is what it looks like when something's taken out of the sky. You see how the smoke looks totally different than a contrail. But what about this gentleman who saw a lot of police presence at the Capitol? Well, my question becomes, shouldn't there be a lot of police officers? Again, I would be shocked when there's not a lot of police officers at our nation's capital. Also, he goes right in the middle of them walking by as they're sitting there sipping on their coffee and eating donuts. Either he's on the force and along with what's going on, or they allowed him to do that. And I don't think they allowed him to do it. So, why would you not ask them what's going on? And if something big was going on, wouldn't they shoo you away from the scene? But what about Erica with a K with this post of showing that a helicopter is out there looking around? Well, here it is, everybody, a Metropolitan Police Officer, and shouldn't they be doing this whenever they're doing police chases or looking for someone? Because I can click on every single night and show you that they're always up looking for something. But what about the no-fly zone? Well, there's always a no-fly zone over DC. But what about this one that went in effect at 5.30 a.m.? Well, look, it's uh, 6.21. Take care. God bless. Let me know what you think. Is it something or not? Bye now. Yeah, I don't know about it, but I would think if it was anything, it probably was like a, a meteor or something. So do we all remember how Donald Trump was charged with 34 felonies just a few months ago? And do we also remember how Donald Trump had to pay $450 million worth of damages to the victims? Yeah, well, that didn't last long because Donald Trump appealed that decision and it just went to the appellate court last week. Now, if you don't know how the appeals court works, basically there's a panel of five judges that all hear the case and then they all come together on a decision. So once again, the prosecuting attorneys laid out their case against Donald Trump and then Donald Trump's lawyers defended him. And by the end of the trial, the five judges basically said that it was a wrongful conviction. In fact, those five judges went as far as to say what the prosecuting attorneys are doing could be considered election interference. And by the end of the trial, the prosecuting attorneys were basically begging the judges not to punish them for bringing these charges. And nobody in the media is talking about this. I tried to Google this to get some more facts about this case, and I couldn't find it anywhere. But it looks like Donald Trump is going to get his $450 million back. And those attorneys that tried to prosecute Trump over these fraud charges might get booked for election interference. It's pretty much over for the other side. <laughs> it really ain't nothing else to say about it. I don't know what he said, but he said one thing about Bluetooth. I guess he was saying that the UFO was a Bluetooth UFO. Now, when I heard that Kamala Harris, vice president pick, was the one who said that there should be tampons and boys' bathroom and men's bathroom, I, I thought he was joking, right? I'm at the county building right here in Los Angeles, California. I want y'all to see this. It says men, right? Look at this. Free tampon, free pads. What in the world is going on? And we are men. This the world we live in, y'all? Men died. I am I am just appalled. What? A woman, are you dropping? I will rip this thing off right now, man. Rip it off, y'all here. Y'all time. Rip it off. We got time for this. We men. What do you know? Wow, I have yet to see that in any bathrooms or public bathrooms I've went in down here. But that's crazy. What do we need with tampon? Help me understand that. It's over. The Biden administration has decided not to renew the humanitarian program that allowed over a half a million migrants to stay here in the U.S. protected under temporary protective status. The temporary protective status offered migrants from Venezuela, Haiti, Nicaragua, Cuba, the ability to stay in the country protected under this program. Well, it's been two Is that a bad thing, though? They need to do something. And it's sad that they waited until now to do it. But let's continue listening to her. And unless the Biden administration renew the program, these migrants are now up in the air and their temporary protective status, it's over, which means now they're undocumented and they can face deportation. 
And unless any of those migrants have married a U.S. citizen as of January 1st, 2025, they can begin deportation. These migrants from these four countries hoped that the Biden administration would renew their program and giving them an extension. The extension would have allowed them to remain in the country legally protected under the program. So what does it mean for over half a million migrants working in the U.S.? Well, now that the program will not be renewed, it means that they no longer have the authorization to legally work in the United States. It means that over half a million migrants are now going to be working illegally. It also means that if they get caught, they can be deported on the spot. The administration was criticized for not renewing the program because the situation on all these countries has not changed. Because I know it's kids and everything involved. This has nothing to do with kids. But I will say this. They had at least two to three years to get all of their paperwork together and become an actual citizen, right? I think that was the whole point of the program. But the program allowed way too many to come in without paperwork. So unless they're trying to get their paperwork together, then they need to go home. And I say that with the utmost respect when I say go home, because that's where they're from. This isn't their home. Yeah. Guys, so you can really tell from here, this, si this sidewalk didn't normally end here, obviously. So the river has moved from over there to here, right? This used to be eight or nine stores out and uh, roads and parking lots. And it just cut its own path. 10 days ago, this river was sitting over there where that trench is cut. What they're doing right now is they're trying to put the river back where it's supposed to be. So if they dam it up, push it over there and then get this road reconnected so they can get back out the other side of town. I know it's hard to understand when you're not here, but just look at this sidewalk. That'll give you your perspective. Yeah, you know, I, I'm all for them, you know, getting the roads and stuff back together so the people in North Carolina can, you know, travel like they're supposed to, man. And still a lot of people still stuck up there, I heard. I don't really know for sure. But when nature does its thing, man, it, 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 that's our problem. We always trying to put stuff back. Nature obviously didn't want it there. I mean... Let nature do, do what it does, and we just have to learn how to build around it. No more smoking weed. I'm going to test you 30 days from today because weed stays in your body for 30 days. I will test you on June where it should be out of your system if you don't smoke from today on. If you smoke after today, you give yourself a jail stay. Do you understand? You are not with any of the people that you hang out with at the store and you're not allowed to go back there. And I'm putting a monitor on the wire. I know where you are at all times. So I will know if you're at school or if you're toying with me. You understand? And I'm giving you a curfew from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. You can either or you can go to jail. What do you want to do? If your mom tells you to you better ask how high, because you give her one problem. I will put you on my knee and I'm gonna spank the child, but I will do it with a ton of jail time. Do you understand? Mm. I'm not playing games. And I'm behavior. And I'm gonna give your mom my card so she can call me directly if she ever has any problems with me. Do you think she wants to be here? Do you think she wants to be in court? Be at home making money? But now she's got to spend the next five hours spending money coming downtown on multiple occasions. Because you act like a knuckle. Not only if you don't graduate from high school, you see all the people back there, you know what they are? Children that never grew up. People that have no self-control. That's what we have back there. They will amount to nothing for the rest of their life. They will never have a pot to piss in. They will never have money. They'll never go on vacations. They'll never buy a Lexus or Mercedes Benz. They'll never go to Fiji. That's what life is about. Life is about buying nice things, going on expensive, lavish vacations. Not over and over. A lot of people 
may not agree with what that judge is doing, but that judge is saving his life because that judge has the power to just lock him up and throw away the key right now. As do many other judges. They just do it. They don't even they don't even preach to you. Other judges don't even preach to you. They just lock you up and throw away the key. I like that judge. That judge is, is making him see the consequences of his actions. Check this out, y'all. Vernon Jones went absolutely nuclear on Obama. I mean, seriously. Like the video, follow, repost, do all the things because you have got to hear this. Hello, America, and hello, Georgia. I'm Vernon Jones, former state representative from the great state of Georgia. And I'm out doing my mm -hmm. normal morning jog. By the way, it's a great day to be in Georgia. It's a beautiful fall day. But anyhow, I just had to pause for the cause. I, like many of you, observed and listened and watched Barack Obama last night as he addressed black men. But as a black man, he did everything but address us. What he did, he berated black men, he rebuked black men, he even scolded black men. Primarily because we will not fall in line and vote for Madam Lockup or brother Kamala Harris because that's her record. As if black men are too stupid that we can't vote our self-interest, what's best for us, our pocketbook, our families. As if we've been immune to the past three and a half years, as if we don't know that gas prices have been higher under Kamala Harris, food prices higher under Kamala Harris, interest rates on home mortgages higher under Kamala Harris, and runaway borders under Kamala Harris. But you know what? That's what the liberal white Democratic Party did. They dispatched Barack Obama out there to whip black men back on the plantation to vote Democrat. And you know, President Obama, he meant a lot to black people, but he didn't do anything for black people. And for him to want to come down from his mansion in Martha's Vineyard and tell black men how we should vote, really? You don't even live in Chicago anymore. You left your black community, Barack Obama, and you want to tell us how to vote? We're not having that. And we're not both like Kamala Harris. I mean, tell me what you think in the comments. Y'all like the video, repost, follow for more. See you on the next one. The only, and then what people don't realize is the only thing Barack Obama did was improve Trump's chances of winning. That's all he did. Here's what Trump said. You guys know what Project 2025? Yeah, yeah, we're, I'm familiar. Here's what Trump said. I didn't even ask him about that, but he said to me, they're trying to pin me with Project 2025. He said, I never even heard of Project 2025. And he said, that was written by a right-wing asshole. And he said, and then he said to me, there are left-wing assholes and there are right-wing assholes. And it was a right-wing asshole that wrote that. That was his quote. President Trump, to me, in 2016, 2020, I fought everything he did. He appointed people to, uh, you know, he appointed a, an oil industry lobbyist, Ryan Lakey, Lakey to uh, run Interior Department, a coal industry lobbyist to run the EPA, a pharmaceutical industry lobbyist to run the Health and Human Services, a telecom lobbyist to run the Federal Communications Decision, and so on. And these were all people who were taking those agencies and turning them predatory against the American public. Mm -hmm. I was suing him and I was fighting him, publicly criticizing him. He said to me when we met, he said, the last time I came into office in 2016, I had no idea how to govern. And he said, you know, we didn't even expect to win. Suddenly we won and we, you have now two months to figure out who, you know, he's got 14,000 appointments to make. Mm -hmm. He said, I was surrounded by business people and lobbyists who said, you know, with this guy, this guy, this guy. And he said, I listened to him and I did it. He said, they were a bunch of bad people. And he said, we're not going to do that this time. We're going to do something different. And he's interested in his legacy and he wants his legacy to be the president who ended the wars, who brought the money home to rebuild the middle class in this country, who, and, and, uh, who ended the censorship, who ended the power of the CIA over the American people, mm -hmm. and who made America healthy again. Well, that would explain why around like the second or third year, Trump started firing people, all those appointed people, right? It makes sense, you know, because they always try to put people in your face who you should work with in the White House. We've seen it done, you know, over the years. So, yeah, I, I get it.
but he never got his extra four years to actually make a difference. Yay, y'all are real quiet today on the left, aren't you? Y'all must have seen what the appellate court did. We all saw it, right? Oh, that's right, they're not reporting it on the mainstream media. See, Donald Trump just got back $450 million that he spent on this appeals court. 34 counts. 34 counts is what corrupt politician Letitia James decided she was gonna try to charge Trump with. And I knew he was gonna win his money back. The judge said, there are no victims in this case. There is no evidence in this case. It was two smart business entities doing business together. The bank said, we don't have a problem. We were paid back. Trump said, we don't have a problem. We paid our loan back with interest. So what's the problem here? And the judge clearly said that it was a clear attack on a presidential candidate and can be misinterpreted for or interpreted as election interference. But he's a felon. He's a rapist. He's racist. Oh my God. Make up people. Political prosecution is real in this country. And the best part, the best part is that the state's lawyers closing arguments were basically begging, begging the appellate court judges not to sanction them. Not only do I think they should all be sanctioned, I think Letitia James needs to be tried. I think she needs to be found guilty because she is clearly, and I think she needs to be put in prison for election interference. Tell me what you think in the comments. And all you liberals, where are you at? Have you woken up yet? Well, I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna leave it here. The Dems don't like this at all. And yes, all those people should be sanctioned. They should be punished for their actions because how else are they gonna learn not to do this again? Yes. They should be. But definitely, the Dems don't like this at all. And that's why they scrambling and scraping and trying to do everything in their power to get people to hate this man. That that ship has sailed, bro. Nobody's going to hate him. Only the Dems are going to hate him. And the people who are misinformed and uninformed, those are the only people that are going to hate him. But the people that know, like they're saying, says, if you know, you know. We not hating him. And I'm not a Republican. I know what I want. I know what we need. I know what the, my children's future need. And, 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 and once he gets in the office, I can rest that much more knowing that my children are going to be okay. And that's just what it is. Everybody else can say and feel however they want to feel. You can get in the comments and talk about how I shouldn't think this way and all of that. That's fine. That's your opinion. But your opinion doesn't shape mine. Nor should it shape anybody else's. And nor shall nobody else's opinion shape yours. That's just what it is. That's how we should live. But nobody's going around sabotaging people's yard signs because they voting for Harris and Waltz. I drive past a million of those every day. But you got Biden and Harris supporters running around sabotaging people's yards and putting poop on their porch because they support Trump. Childish. That is extremely childish. I've never seen this type of behavior out of adults. And this just goes to show why Dems are liberals and Republicans are conservatives. But this just goes to show why the Dems are childish. Because I don't agree with everything the Republicans say either. But they are a lot more logical than the left. And I'm just saying, man, us as content creators, us as American people, we have fought to get these messages out and get this information out and you may not see it but these videos and other videos like mine and these content creators on tiktok have shaped the way that this election is going and it's good that it has it's great actually to be honest with you and and and, and it gives us a glimmer of hope as a people it gives us a glimmer of hope and now we can actually move forward knowing that things are actually going to be okay. We got a few days left. We cannot drop the ball right now. We can't get comfortable. We actually need to go a lot more harder, a lot more harder as content creation, as a people, people on TikTok. We need to go extremely harder. Whether we, we believe it or not, we actually shape 
this nation we shape this world we let people see things i see a lot of y'all come in and say hey i don't even watch tiktok i'm not even on tiktok your videos keep me updated yeah but it's a lot of bull crap that i have to scroll past too <laughs> So I'm giving y'all what I think y'all should actually see. So that's what a lot of content creators do. When they talk about certain things, they talk about issues. When they create these videos, they talk about issues they, they know that the people need to hear, man. Because it ain't hard to see when somebody is trying to throw somebody under the bus. And that's what they've been trying to do with Mr. Trump all this year and, and, and before that. But, you know, I can rant all day, but I won't. And with that being said... Do what you will with that information. And hey, if you like what you saw, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Turn on that notification bell so you know when I upload. Get in the description, follow all my social medias. And remember, challenge the argument and not the person.